Hey guys, Lindsay with Madam Making. We are back in the sewing room studio today. We are going to be taking some raw fabric and we're going to be making a double sided throw pillow with an invisible zipper. In the last episode, I kind of talked to you guys about marking up the fabric after it's been cut so that you have a clear guide for your seam allowance as well as where that zipper is going to be placed. So let's do a really quick review and then we're going to start sewing. We're here in the sewing room. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to take this fabric over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew a straight line from this one and a half inch mark out here to the corner where I've marked on both sides. Nothing fancy, just a straight stitch. Remember to back stitch at the beginning and the end and do the left and right side. You can see here, I've got both the left and right side sewn together leaving it open in the middle. Using my hand, I'm just folding it back a bit and then I'm going to lightly iron the fabric to create a perfect place for our invisible zipper. Now, of course, the iron did its job and removed all of my markings for me, so I'm just gonna rewrite those real quick. I have my invisible zipper and it's also marked at each of those points on the front and the back. Invisible zippers look a little bit different than a traditional zipper. If you are looking at the right side of the zipper, you won't be able to see the teeth. So you'll want to take the right side of the zipper, place it down along that seam where we just ironed, and line up all of those markings. I like to pin the center point first and then work my way out from there. Now back over to the sewing machine and we're just going to do a simple straight stitch along the very edge of the zipper and the fabric. This will help hold the zipper in place and make sure that there's no shifting that happens and the teeth align perfectly. I'll repeat the same thing on the other side of the zipper. Now you can see here when I flip this over how loose that center part is. That means it's time to get the invisible zipper foot and put it on the sewing machine. Now here are a few common invisible zipper feet. They each are a little bit different. Some people prefer a see-through one or one that's shaped like this. I prefer this one right here and I will show you why. When you flip it over, the grooves kind of sit in this V pattern. What that's going to do is push the zipper teeth out of the way so you can get a nice tight stitch right up next to them. If you don't have one, they're easy to order. You just need to know if your sewing machine accepts low shank or high shank. But most home machines are low shank. There are adapters you can buy, but if you know what your machine is, it's easy to find a good invisible zipper foot. This is where the magic happens. Let's slow this down just a tiny bit. The needle drops down through the center of the presser foot. There's two grooves, a left and a right. You're going to line up the zipper teeth in the left groove so that as you're sewing, that groove is going to push the zipper teeth out of the way, letting you sew right next to them. This part right here is why I suggest getting a zipper that's longer than your pillow cover. It will allow you to slide the zipper head out of the way while you sew in the zipper and slide it back into place before you close up the ends. Hit the brakes, pull that zipper head to the center of the zipper, and then continue. Now you can see here the mark we made at one and a half inch and the mark we made at two inches. Line the sewing machine up at that two inch mark. You're going to do a straight stitch from the edge of the zipper to the center of the zipper. Then you'll stop, flip the fabric over, and do the other side. Make sure that you're only sewing through the edge of the zipper and the edge of the fabric and do this for the top and bottom of the zipper. The invisible zipper is in. Hopefully now some of these markings that I've made will make sense. So this one that I made here at an inch and a half, that is where I sewed from the corner in, connecting this fabric to this fabric and then I stopped at that line. We attached the zipper on both sides and then use the zipper foot to get in really, really tight next to the zipper teeth is where I sewed from the outside to the middle of the zipper and then I flipped it around and did from the outside to the middle of the zipper. So that is actually going to stop the zipper right there at that point. I've cut the zipper shorter right there. So as I finish attaching the top fabric to the bottom fabric, I won't have the bulk of that zipper to deal with. Now let's flip this bad boy over and see how invisible this invisible zipper is. 
Once it's finished, that zipper is going to sit right along that seam. Now before moving on, make sure to open up that zipper a little bit because once the cover's finished, we're going to have to flip it inside out through that zipper opening. Now this part flies. You're going to want to put the right sides of the fabric together. Line up those center marks that we made of the top and bottom fabric, making sure that everything is aligned perfectly. Now all we have to do is take it over to the sewing machine and follow the line that we've drawn all the way around. As you approach the corner, you're going to do three things. Sew a little bit beyond the corner, back it up using the back stitch, with the needle down, spin the fabric to a 45 degree angle. Sew forward and backward a couple of times, realign the needle, and then continue on your way. Now let's do that one more time. Pass the line, back it up, spin the fabric, stitch forward and backward a couple of times. It's maybe one or two stitches. Line up the needle, spin the fabric again, and then continue on your way. And it's the same thing once you reach the zipper. Back it up a little bit, spin the fabric, do that 45 degree angle, and then you're done. Now before the flip, there's a little bit of finish work. I personally like to take pinking shears and I cut off all of the extra fabric all the way around including clipping out the bulk from each corner. Now I'm going to reach my hand in, open up that zipper the rest of the way, and start flipping this pillow cover right side out. And why yes, this is a chopstick. I like to keep them in the workroom because they really help poke the corners out without damaging the fabric. And there we have it, a double-sided throw pillow with an invisible zipper. Are you ready to see why an invisible zipper is worth all the fuss? I love that I can display it either direction. It's a great way to change up my decor without having to make another cover. All right, now I know a throw pillow is a very small, very simple project, but look at all of the things that we learned. Yes, there were a lot of videos, but we talked about pillow stuffings. We talked about measuring 3D objects. We talked about marking up your fabric to make your life so much easier. You learned about sharp corners. You learned about pinking shears. You learned about putting in an invisible zipper. These are all great foundational skills that you can take in a multitude of directions and use on a lot of different projects. Thanks for staying tuned. If you missed any of the episodes, they're all up on my channel. If you enjoyed this, I would love to hear about it in the comments. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Do all the things, push all the buttons, follow along for more. Madam Making.